Good afternoon guys, MC Procrastinate here for another 2 Minute Videos part of the 2 Minute Series. If you don't know what 2 Minute Series is, check the video link below and you'll find it all about it. The topic of today is what I think is the best looking super sports bike of 2017. Now, that was actually a hard thing to do because when you look at a bike you go, oh that's the coolest bike, and then a week later, oh that's the coolest bike. It's actually quite hard to keep track of and then you think, well actually what are the parts that make me think that that bike looks really good. So for, in order for me to pick what I think is the best looking bike for super sports bike of 2017, I had to put some form of matrix together, kind of split it down into a couple of components. And these are overall aggressiveness, one to three. So everything's scored from one to three. In hindsight, what I probably should have done is put point system in because that would have made it a little bit easier when we got like this, the same matchings on some, but I'll pick one over the other and I'll explain that as I work my way through them. So overall aggressiveness at front end and rear end aesthetics. So in other words, that's pretty much like um, what are the cool things about the front? What, why do I like it? Rear end, why do I like it? What makes it great? Okay, and then the uh, the symmetry. So the overall symmetry of the bike, the lines of the bike, right? How the back flows into the front. Does it look like two different bikes that are being stuck together? So how well it amalgamates together to make it the bike that it is, right? And again, one to three. And then color. So the color is a bit ambiguous, really. When I pick color, I try to pick the best color that's available by each brand, in my views, and go on and score that for like one, two, three. So in other words, if it was a tri-color Italian, such as the Ducati or Aprilia, that would get a three. But if it's like a, a Honda CBR that's only available in red, um, I would give it a one, right? As an example. I'm not saying that that's the case, but it's just an example. Right, so let's move into these. So, drum roll, what is number one? Number one is the Ducati 1299. When it comes to aggressiveness, this bike has every aspect of aggressiveness from the front to the back to the sides, just to the way the wheels and the colours and everything comes together, it definitely looks a truly aggressive bike. It scored 3 out of 3. The front of the bike, I love the fact that Takati have done an excellent job with the lights, integrating that into the front. It feels more like the, uh, the lights were meant to be there as part of the design of the bike as opposed to, oh we have to put this in as an afterthought. Not that saying that they do that in general, but I'm just saying sometimes it feels like that, okay? And then we talk about the um, general aesthetics of the bike. Well, we look along the side of the bike, we look at the front, we look at the back. I feel like it looks like an, um, some kind of form of fighter uh, aircraft. It, it, it looks like it's perfectly streamlined. It looks like it just comes together. You, to be fair, you'd be very difficult to fault that bike, and it definitely gets a three out of three. And then we talk about the rear of the bike. In fact, I would probably say that in this instance, for this specific model, Ducati really have absolutely nailed it. I used to think MV Augusta F4000, which everybody knows, I'm a bit of a fan of MV Augusta, um, with the triple pipes coming out the back under the seat, was the best looking bike. Truly, I feel that they've been knocked off their pedestal and Ducati have just taken that in. The way that they've integrated the rear lights into the whole back system there, the exhaust system they have on the specific bike, the openness to see the rear tire, it truly is absolutely fantastic. So for 2017, the Ducati 1299, this specific model gets my vote. So next question is what comes in at number two? I was a little bit surprised when I actually picked this bike. So um, next bike is the Yamaha R1M. Now, first off, before we get into it, and we say that, by the way, this bike did get a three out of three for aggressiveness, there's nobody gonna dispute that, surely. Um, this bike gets my vote, uh, you might see one of my other previous videos, where we have a robot actually riding the motorcycle. So, it definitely gets my vote before we even start. But, let's talk about the bike in general. Right, so, um, one, we know that it's top vote on aggressive look. I love the fact that it looks futuristic, that kind of makes it look aggressive while making it futuristic. And when we're talking about futuristic, and we talk about the, the front light integration, I probably they've even upstaged the carry on this one. They've done an excellent job of being able to integrate the lights, the front headlamps into the front. You almost can't see them. They look like two lasers pointing out, which again adds to that kind of futuristic component of the bike. And it just looks so clean that you've got this nice nose cone that just stripes down. And then we talk about the, um, the overall aesthetics, the kind of um, symmetry of the bike. You definitely couldn't say there's two bikes switched together on this. The front is replicated by the symmetry on the back. I like what the R1 has done with reference to the kind of, um, looks like a sort of tail spoiler with the vents. Very similar to the Ducati system, but they've done enough to make it unique to Yamaha. So that got number three there. The rear end of the bike again, number three, when we're talking about that kind of um, whole spoiler type effect with these little 
aileron side kind of hole thing going on there. It looks great. Again, we've got like a great open back end there. The only thing I could probably bring down on this bike and really only where it lost out versus the Ducati because it was so like Ducati R1, Ducati R1. Really the only thing I could say is just, it's just a color. The color compared to the other bikes just isn't quite as good. Even when we look at the, um, the graphite model here, I think that's stunning, but it's just not, again, quite as out there in your face as that tri-color Ducati. So, at number two, we have the Yamaha R1M. Let's move on to number three, which is, again, another bike that kind of fought it out for number two. It's a little bit close to my heart. No, it's not the MV Augusta, but it is the Aprilia RS V4 RF, or in this case, I've put up an image of the non-RF model. Now, scoring-wise, this got a three for aggressiveness. This is a great bike to look at, and it is definitely reeking of aggression, okay? Very similar to the kind of Ducati, but unique again. It's got this lovely little looks like a, um, a rocket for, fired from so it's like the caddy have fired the rocket and out came the Aprilia RS V4 it's just got a fantastic rear end with these fins on it just makes it look so amazing and of course the way they put the lights the way the whole bike is packaged together definitely looks very aggressive so while we're talking about the lights um, I actually had to score the bike down to number two. I think it's really, really difficult because Ducati, Yamaha have done such a great job. It actually makes it quite hard for some of these other manufacturers to kind of um, come up to their standards. So they basically moved the post, right? So the uh, Aprilia RS V4, I mean, they've done a really good job with the lights and the lights look like they form to the shape and the way that the bike flows from front to back. But the problem really is that they take up a lot of the bike on the front. They, they kind of just there. They, 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 you know their lights, you know their headlights, and they kind of just, yeah, th that's it, right? So, the, yeah, I probably couldn't say much more than that, so I gave it a two for that. And then we talk about the general aesthetics of the bike. Um, it probably isn't the most modern looking bike, so it's probably not the most um, amazing looking bike when it comes to difference from all the other bikes. I mean, you can see that the frame and the way it's put together is kind of like a standardish type bike kind of format but they do it really really well and to be fair everything flows from the front to the back really really well so that kind of got a three and then we talk about the rear of the bike right so this specific image here is of a 2016 model and they haven't changed because actually it's really hard for me to find uh, a Prillia that actually took a back end shot now I just love very similar to the Ducati and the R1. Why it doesn't have vents coming in? You've got the fin system on the back, but you've got a lovely little integrated brake system on the back there that just makes it look great. Now, ultimately, I scored this bike the same as the R1, all right? But because of the modernization of the R1, I just had to bring this down. So in at number three, the Aprilia RSV4 RM. And number four, this is my favorite of all time, the MV Augusta F4, this specific instance, it's the RC model. And interestingly enough, before we go much further, this is the very first key component is where it scored the least, which really breaks my heart. But some bikes are just meant for different purposes. And this actually scored one out of three on the aggressive scale. So why is that? So when we look at the other bikes, they're very angular, they're very sharp. This kind of has lovely lines that are curved and they just flow perfectly funny enough like art right because that's what MV Augusta is MV Augusta make great bikes they don't quite get into the top tier but they're very artistic they're very they feel like they have a lot of soul and that's exactly what this MV Augusta has a lot of soul but unfortunately not too much aggression so it got a one out of three the front lights on this bike, well, interestingly enough, they've done something really, really well for an awful long time. So to put it in perspective, the MV Augusta F4 hasn't actually changed a lot since the very, very early bikes. Yes, they've had electronic packages, etc. put on them, but they, the overall shape, they have not changed too much. The rear end just slightly. So in other words, they've had facelifts over a long period of time. 
but the actual crux of the bike has remained the same. Now one of the really cool things that MVA and is their signature on their bike is their diamond shaped light and for that they get a 3 out of 3 because they have effectively ahead of the game a long time ago making a light system that looked something aesthetically pleasing and nice as opposed to something you just had to have. So one of the positive points about the MV Gust is just what I said. So while they don't look aggressive, they are probably one of the best looking bikes in the world when it comes to how the front, the midsection and the rear end of the bike come together in a matter of beauty. There is no other manufacturer in the world that perfects this in the way that MV Augusta does. So for that, they get a three. The rear end of the bike also got a three and the color also got a three. The only thing that let that down was, like I said earlier, was the aggressive look on the bike. I just want to say one very quick thing here. So the MV Augusta F4 has done some fantastic bikes over the years. Now Lewis Hamilton has come into the equation and he's done some really, really cool things. In fact, he did this Dragster, which you can see in the image here. He designed that, a Lewis Hamilton Special Edition Dragster that looked amazing, absolutely amazing. However, unfortunately he's got his hands on the F4 now because I guess everybody's been really happy with what he's done and he's made this bike that's red and black and it kind of looks like an old Kawasaki ZX-12R and that's no offense to anybody that has a Kawasaki ZX-12R. Maybe he should have done it green and then it would have been a replacement right there. So at number five we have the Kawasaki H2. Now look, I'm not even going to say too much about this bike because to be fair, you just look at this and it's an aggressive looking bike. It scored a number three. And then the front of the bike, the headlights, well, where are the headlights and where are the intake? It's it's like almost too hard to work out what's what. It's just, it's amazing. Like they made this huge thing that looks like it could be the lights or is it the intake? It's, it's yep, we got three in my vote. And then what it kind of went long, wrong was the um, symmetry of the bike. Well, it certainly looks like a bike that's kind of being pieced together, right? Like no one piece kind of looks like it rolls into the other, but it's sort of like this ugly monster you sort of like. Um, but still, if we're talking about symmetry and the way the bike flows together, it got a one, so it did quite poor there. The rear end on the bike, yeah, it just looks so cool. It's a massive big aileron thing on the back there. It gets a three in color. Yeah, well, I mean, there's not too many color versions there other than the kind of chromey type reflective effect. We got a two on that. So that's in at number five. So at number six, we have the BMW RR. And I think the BMW RR, from an aggressive perspective, definitely is a three out of three. The front ends, the lights, oh, I mean, we're talking, it's, well, I, it might be a little bit Marmite to most people. It's like a love or hate thing. I don't mind it, but I definitely give it a two. Symmetry lines, well, as much as I kind of love the kind of little shark thing going on in the side, it, it, it just, yeah, it's just it's a bit bland. You know, it's nothing really special. Again, I give a two for that. Rear end, similar sort of thing. Nothing special in the back, but it's nothing bad. I give it a two. And the color, yep, yeah, it's not a bad color. It's not a great color. It gets a two, so that's at number six. You have the Honda CBR in at number seven. And yeah, lots of people raving about this bike and how wondrous it looks. I'm not too sure about that, but look, let's go through the overall scoring of this. So the Honda CBR. So the Honda CBR um, definitely looks more aggressive than the previous bikes. Um, I know because they had a Honda CBR 2015 model, but it's still not really that aggressive, right? Like compared to some of the other bikes, I think it fits in kind of, um, well, it gets a two. And then the front end of the bike, well, you know what, just have a look at this image from a Cylon from Battleship Galactica. Yeah, I'm not overly fussed on it. It looks like more than that than it has, certainly when you look at the R1 and the other bikes that are more top end there. It looks like they've thought a lot more about how they're gonna put the lights in there. Um, I give it a two for that. The symmetry in the lines, yeah, pieces together quite well, right? It's, it makes, makes quite a good package. I don't look at one piece of the bike and go, yeah, it doesn't quite fit. Give it a number, I'd give it three for that. The rear end, yeah, I just I, I just don't like the rear end. It's, that's just like plain James, nothing special going on. No fins, no bits sticking out, Just it's just a rear end nose. It's just a rear end piece just put on the bike like all their other bikes, a bit bland. Um, so I give it a two for that. And the color, yeah, probably better than some of the bikes they've done in the past. Again, it's nothing special, but it's nothing bad. It's just all right. Next we have the Kawasaki ZX-10R. 
So on form, true of any Kawasaki, this is one thing, they definitely hold true for almost every single Kawasaki ZX-10R they have produced over time. When you want aggression, you can look to Kawasaki and you can definitely find that. It is aggressive, it gets three out of three. The front lights, yep, look at this image. Honestly, it looks like the calling from a UFO or something. It's not ugly, it's not pretty, it's just different and you either like it or you don't. I am still not sure what I think of it. Um, the symmetry of the bike, it definitely pieces together quite well, although I will say that the bike sort of looks like the front is a little bit more retro than the back, but um, it's probably the best part of the bike. So, so far we've given overall aggressiveness 3, the front end aesthetics 1, the symmetry we're going to give it is a 3, the rear end of the bike, again, it's pretty much average like the Honda, we give it 2, and the colour schemes, uh, they just, yeah, they've got green and black and, you know, black and white, and just they don't really, Kawasaki aren't the best at colour schemes, you're either going to be a green racer or just avoid the brand altogether. Um, so it comes in at number A, and then last, and I'm sure some people will be probably pretty mad at me for putting this here, because good old Suzuki GSX-R came out with something pretty big this year, they introduced their new model, and in my eyes, I really just look at this bike and go, really they took us 10 years 10 odd years to come out with this and this is what you come out with it really doesn't look anything special but hey let's get into the key components of this so when we're talking about the um, overall aggression on the bike we give it a two it doesn't look aggressive and it doesn't not look aggressive it's somewhere in between um, the front end aesthetics uh, I really don't know what they're trying to do here all they've done is taken the old bike and made it look slightly more modern it looks more like a facelift front end than it does a new front end um, I guess it's not got a huge light it's got Intex there that people might like but in my eyes it's a two symmetry it's interesting because it reminds me of an old school bike one of the Triumph 595s they kind of like have this curved arch like hunch kind of look on them between the front into the midsection into the tail um, so it doesn't really gel totally well, I'd probably give it a 2. The rear end of the bike, yep, again like the Hondas, they've just thrown out everything and just go, hey, we've dealt with the first two parts of the bike, let's just chuck on a back end, in my view. And the colour, well, in GSX-R fashion, they've not really created anything new here, they've stuck to their core colours, very similar to Kawasaki. So guys, that is my lineup. So let's just run through them and recap. We got Ducati 1299 number one, Yamaha R1 number two, Aprilia RSB4 RF number three, MV Augusta F4 number four, Kawasaki H2 number five, BMW RR number six, Honda CBR seven, Kawasaki ZX10R number eight, and lastly, the Suzuki GSXR number nine. So, let me know what your thoughts. I completely understand that all their differences and our perceptions about what makes a great looking bike are completely different. But hopefully you get an idea on how I've managed to piece together what I see as the best looking bike of 2017. If you think you have a better looking bike that falls in that super sports classification, stick in a link below, paste a comment, let me know your thoughts on the video, and this will be my last video now until um, February next year. So for now, I hope you all have a great Christmas, a fantastic new year, and I will see you in February. Thanks very much, guys, for your support. MC Procrastinator out.